Each of you are invited to ask your questions a a as well. <laughs> um, so, so Theo, first, thank you so very much You're for welcome. for being here and, and sharing your 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 work and and to to hear your work. You're you're sharing your life. It it, it sounds as though you're you're revealing um, a very private, personal process. Um, I'm I'm curious. Um, at what point in your life did you feel uncomfortable in, um, do I say, in your anatomy or in your biology or, or just uh, perhaps in, in your existence? Um, when, when did this feeling that would become a uh, transition, uh, when, when did it first begin? Yeah, that's a question that I think a lot about and that many people ask me. Um, I think there's a dominant narrative that you're supposed to know when you're three or four or five. Um, and I don't know that that was the case for me. Um, I think it was more that I didn't identify with gender at all. I kind of felt like I was floating. And I played the game of being a girl because that's what I was taught I should do um, mm -hmm. and what was expected. Um, and I played the game very, very well, but it never felt authentic to me. Um, it's very interesting looking back at my years in the ballet world because I was immersed in um, the pre-professional dance world, um, oh my which God. is a hyper-feminine, hyper-binary gender yeah. um, world, and I think that definitely contributed to my like sheer repression of my gender identity because um, there was just no place for that in that world, and I loved dancing, so mm -hmm. you know I felt I need to fit into that. Um, yeah, it wasn't until it wasn't until later. It was around. Um, Around age 20, I'm 25 now, I just turned 25 a few days ago. Oh, happy um, birthday. Okay, thank you. Um, that the feelings of masculinity started surging up in uh, ways I couldn't deny. And it was definitely quite a process of me not knowing how to integrate that, you know, coming, putting one foot out of the closet, stepping back in, you know. Being tented as well. Yeah, a... cutting off my hair and trying to present more masculinely and then freaking out and pulling back and, mm -hmm. you know, doing what was expected. Um, and it really wasn't until this last summer that I fully looked in the mirror and owned that I'm transgender um, and met a supportive community of other trans people who have really helped usher me into this new way of being, um, which is such a gift. Um, well, yeah. to, to have community and support, yeah. it would seem... Uh, uh, a necessity uh, it is, yeah. for, for such a gigantic personal change. Um, I, I'm curious, how, how far or how deep did you get into the dance world? Was it, for instance, your, as far as college years, was it actually uh, a career that, that you were in a dance company? What, what, in what ways did, did the dance um, uh, uh, express itself? Yeah, I started very, very young, as many little girls do, um, in ballet when I was five, um, and quickly... Did, did you wear, like, uh, did you have a tutu? Or <laughs> yes, at yeah. that point I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it became very, very clear to me at a young age that I, um, I wanted to dedicate myself to it. I really lived and breathed ballet for many years, um, up through the end of high school. Um, and I was, yeah, I was very serious. I was in a pre-professional school. I got children's parts with the company, and we had a youth company that would tour um, nationally. Wow. Um, I did summer intensives, all of that. Um, so I was very, very immersed, and it shaped a large part of my identity in really formative years. Um, also, you know, came with a lot of very toxic kind of shadow sides of um, body image stuff and disordered eating and right. many things that had kind of run rampant in that world, and that I can now see looking back through this lens had also to do with gender for me. Mm -hmm. um, a mix of things. But I was very serious, yeah. Wow, wow. Um, I mean, you said right right off the bat that it, it's sort of this hyper-feminized world, hyper-masculine. I mean, talk about polarity. Um, a ballet, ballet, and even just the word for me, and I, I'm, I'm guessing um, maybe for many of you, it's, it's that ballet dancer, very, very slim, very feminine, um, 
even the costume heightening the, uh, the, the feminine? It's a very transcendent art, um, which is what I kind of touched on in this poem when I said, you know, I knew how to fly, but I didn't know how to land. Uh -huh. um, you know, very, very ungrounded in many ways, um, and a strange kind of paradox of being highly trained physically, but not in touch with my body at all, not actually embodied or in my body. Um, wow, so what, a, what a paradox it to, is, uh, yeah. to live with. Um, was there another question? Yes. So are you still dancing? Yeah. No. How has it changed? <laughs> no, I left the ballet world officially when I was 16. Um, I dance for myself. I dance in more free-form ways. Um, I've done a practice called Five Rhythms, which is um, kind of a more free-form, ecstatic movement um, group dance that feels more authentic to me and more, you know, letting my body move the way it wants to move instead of putting in this regimented structure that, um, you know, that is very unnatural to the human body <laughs> in many ways. <laughs> Beautiful but unnatural. Um, yeah, so I dance in informal ways, but not necessarily technical dance. Uh, anyone else while we're on this? Um, oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll ask a question. I think in the last one, this is a bit of a paraphrase, but you said something to the effect of like, what you care most about is that you're here, present, able to say your piece, just at all. Are you from Boulder or are you from somewhere else? I'm originally from Eugene, Oregon, which so is very like similar to Boulder place. in some ways. Wow. Yeah. I was say, do you feel like this is a place where you have more freedom of expression? I definitely do um, have a lot of community that supports me in my expression. Um, I went to Naropa University, which was, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, very much about cultivating the, the whole person and the individual expression. Um, yeah, I feel I feel a certain level of permission here to be myself that I wouldn't otherwise. Not to say that there isn't a lot of transphobia here as well. Um, there's a lot that I think people in Boulder don't like to acknowledge. We like to think of it as this liberal haven, and you know, there's definitely a shadow side. We have our problems here too. Um, I and my friends encounter a lot of, a lot of shit. Um, but yeah, in general, I would say I feel more free to be myself here. That's awesome. Anyone else? Um, it's funny, you mentioned five rhythms, and I, I'm familiar with it. Actually, from Burning Man, I, I, I was heading somewhere to a place that I could not actually find. But on the way, there were people dancing in a most ecstatic, joyful, wonderful way. And it was it was like twelve noon, um, mm -hmm. and the dance floor was full. And um, I thought, gee, I, I set up for myself to go to this event or something, um, and that looks like fun. <laughs> So when I couldn't find the place I thought I was heading to, I, I knew I, I would go to that dance place. And I, I danced and danced and had the most wonderful time. And people said, um, how long have you been doing five rhythms? And, and I said, what's five rhythms? <laughs> You're natural. <laughs> well, there. <laughs> there, there used to be something in, in Boulder. Yeah. It may have um, transformed, um, as we all do in some measure, um, called Dance Home at, at Third and Pearl. It was in a building called Solstice Institute, and it was a very free-form dance. I don't think it ever identified itself as five rhythms, but the, the freedom of it and the, um, the, even the freedom of the music, that there'd be a DJ uh, selecting music from all over the world, mm -hmm. from every genre. Um, so I, I, I guess I was warmed up to it. <laughs> if you ever want to dance again, there's something called Movement Mass that happens on Sunday mornings. Oh, I, I actually am Yeah, that's five rhythms. That's oh, five okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done it maybe a couple of times. I, I'm curious on, I, I think it was your first piece. It, it seemed, or maybe it, it was in a part of both, but, but there seemed to be... Um, a speaking or a message uh, for your mom, and and I'm imagining that anyone going through a, a change of well, let's just say a change of expectation, of family expectation. I mean, uh, generally, whatever our an anatomy or biology is at birth, that's what family is supporting and expecting. Um, so I would imagine it being. 
uh, a terribly difficult um, thing to communicate. Um, it seems your piece touches on that. Um, do you care to say something of how you did uh, come out or express uh, to your family? Yeah, um, I can say for one that I am lucky. I have very supportive parents. They definitely have um, had their own process of grief and, and transition alongside me because, you know, it affects everyone who loves me, yeah. especially my family of origin. Um, yeah, I don't know that I want to share my full coming oh, out it, story. It's okay, um, that's okay. Yeah, but I do, yeah, I can say that um, I wish that more trans people had the family that I'm blessed to have. Um, and, you know, my mother, my mother, has, I think, went through her own grief process around losing, um, or what she saw as losing her daughter. Um, and I think it took her a little while to realize that what she was grieving was really more the idea of me than me. Right. Um, right. Yeah, and she's definitely um, settled into the new reality in a really beautiful way. And um, yeah, I'm very lucky. Well, well, thank you for sharing that. I mm -hmm. mean, that it's really it's a very personal, private um, worlds that we are exploring, and uh, I want to be respectful of <laughs> of, of, of 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 your your privacy. Um, your your writing, you, you mentioned Naropa. Um, what do you see for yourself as far as your writing? I mean, clearly these are relatively short pieces. They're they're poems. Um, uh, I, I like to think of anyone reading a poem out loud is now um, entering the theater world, mm -hmm. uh, entering performing arts. Um, do you write in longer forms? Um, are there other, um, well, what, what things do you see yourself exploring a, a, in your process as a, a writer and, and artist? A lot of what I've done in the past has been poetry. Um, mm -hmm. Probably for the last 10 years, off and on, I've written poetry. Um, I definitely love writing more reflective, kind of memoir-type pieces, more substantial prose. Um, dabbled a little bit in fiction. I have a novel going. It's kind of been on the back burner. I did um, something called um, Nano Rimo, National Novel Writing Month. Um, have oh you ever heard God. of this? No, no, it's I haven't. Terrifying. Um, <laughs> it's terrifying. It sounds very it's ambitious. It's a challenge. It's a challenge to write a novel within the month of November, um, mm -hmm. first draft. And I can't say I did that, but I got a substantial amount of it out last November and have been letting it kind of percolate. Um, I definitely, yeah, I'm very interested in exploring other forms of writing. I feel like I'm at a turning point. Honestly, in a lot of places in my life, not just gender, I feel like I've been owning, um, owning myself and my desires and my authenticity in um, various ways. And I think one of those is really committing myself to writing. and realizing that this is something that I deeply, deeply want and something that scares the shit out of me, kind of like transitioning and um, coming up, uh -huh. you know? Um, but that level of self-honesty of, um, yeah, that I'm a writer and I want to be doing more of this and I want to be um, saying yes to the opportunities given to me and, you know, making it more of a daily practice instead mm -hmm. of just waiting for inspiration to strike, but, yeah, right, right, really putting uh, myself into it. Uh, creating a, a discipline yeah, for it. a structure. Um, I, I'm curious on that November novel uh, project uh, challenge. Um, what was that this past November? This past November, okay. um, I had a very solid week of meeting my word count every day and writing like a maniac. And then Trump was elected, and I lost my shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the novel got put on the back burner. <laughs> um, but it's still it's still in progress, just more slowly. And, and the the daily word count. Is that something you assign yourself, or whether are there guidelines for this? There are uh, guidelines. Um, I'm forgetting the exact word count that um, the novel draft is supposed to be, but yeah, I was just breaking it, you know, down right. per day, trying to be consistent. Uh huh. I'm I'm curious, given that I have not attempted to write a novel, um, <laughs> did you begin with an outline where you knew? where the story was going, or did you even have a story to begin, or how, how did you uh, uh, take it on? I had a very, um, very rough inspiration that just kind of came to me, um, and then I, I made a huge mind map, which I really love, like with the bubbles and the lines going off and other bubbles, and um, on a huge piece of butcher paper in my room in all uh -huh. these different colors, and like no one else would understand what it meant except me. Uh -huh. um, right. But I definitely had a kind of haphazard way of organizing it. Um, uh -huh. 
Yeah, it was kind of, it was a mixture of, of structure and also just writing and letting the writing take me to unexpected places. And, uh -huh. Yeah. Well, good for you for, for even attempting it, even if you <laughs> became distracted. I, I think we all were very distracted <laughs> um, by, by the election of a certain someone. Um, um, by the way, if you're not registered to vote, um, I won't lecture, but um, voting... Do it. Do it. Do it. Get registered. <laughs> Don't let other people decide who our public representative shall be. Um, end of lecture for, for this minute, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> um, well.